Welcome to Slash Bash, where today I am bringing you another malicious compliance Reddit video. In our first story, my ex's divorce lawyer said to send three years of complete financials or else, as you wish. Let's jump right in. This happened several years ago when my ex and I were going through a heated divorce and custody battle. While we were married, we had a couple of conversations about how rich people hide their assets to avoid paying taxes. I've never had enough assets to do this, but she somehow got the idea that I was and told her attorney that I was laundering money and hiding income. It was more likely the heat of the moment as divorce and custody battles often come down to. I couldn't even afford my own attorney, so I represented myself. Her lawyer wasn't a total jerk, but he clearly was out to get me and he talked down to me like I didn't deserve to breathe the same air. One day, I get a letter in the mail from him requesting an updated income declarations form and three years of financials. It had a long list of things to include. I own a communications tech company that was in super startup phase back then. Money was already tight. I was trying to get this business off the ground with no financing. I was finishing my MBA with scholarships and loans, so paying for copies and postage or driving this 30 miles to his office meant eating peanut butter and saltines for a week. So I called him to explain my situation. He all but called me a liar and didn't believe I couldn't afford it. I was put off by that and I said this was taking time away from business I needed to handle, to which he replied, and I'll never forget this, well, according to your income declarations, you're not that busy. What do you do all day? He then said if he didn't get these documents, he would consider my previous filings as fraudulent, tell the judge, contact the DA, and also alert the state tax agency and IRS. Probably an empty threat, but I'm no lawyer. Efax is one of the services my company provides, and at this time it was relatively unknown. So I asked him if he has a fax machine. He said he had a fax scanner copier device, then said, what law office doesn't have a fax machine? And I suddenly got an idea. Okay, I said to him, I'll put together and fax whatever I can. Okay, mother flipper, you want three years of financials? You got it. I scanned to PDF every receipt I could find. McDonald's receipt from five years ago, flip it. Won't hurt to include it. CVS receipt, it's three miles long, perfect. They get the $1 off toothpaste coupons too. I downloaded every bank statement, credit card statement, purchase orders from vendors, and every invoice I sent to clients. I printed to PDF the entire three-year accounting journal, monthly, quarterly, annual balance sheets, cash flow statements, P&Ls. Not only did I PDF three years of tax filings, but every single letter I received from the IRS and state tax agency, including the inserts advising me of my rights. It took a while, but I was a few days ahead of the deadline. I made a cover page black background with white lettering. Wherever I could, I included separator pages in all caps in the biggest, boldest font that would fit on the page and landscape. 2,000 in blank receipts, 2,000 in blank taxes, etc. I merged everything into a single 150 plus page compressed PDF and sent the document using my eFax system. Every hour or so, I received a status email saying the fax failed. Huh, that's weird. Well, they're getting this document. So, I changed the system configuration to unlimited retries after failures to keep redialing until it went through. Weird, I was still getting status email failures. I'll delete the failure emails and keep the success one after it eventually goes through, I thought. Problem solved. Two days later, a lady from his office called and asked me to stop sending the fax. Their fax, scanner, printer, copier had been printing nonstop. It kept getting paper jams, kept running out of ink, and they had to keep shutting it off and back on to print. I explained that her boss told me to send this by the deadline or else he would call the DA and IRS. Since I didn't want a call from the DA or the IRS, I would keep sending until I get a success confirmation. 
I suggested they just not print until my fax completes, but she didn't like that. I'll bet that secretary still has nightmares every time she hears a printer. I don't like to wish ill on people, but I kinda hope so for being so damn condescending when she called me. She said something like, We have important work to do here. Hmm, let me check my pockets to see how many flips I have to give. Sorry, I'm all out. She asked me to email the documents and I told a little white lie that my email wouldn't allow an attachment that big. Unless her boss, in writing, agreed to cancel the request or agreed to reimburse me for my costs of print and ship, I said I would continue to fax until they confirm they have received every page. She puts me on hold and the attorney gets on the line. He said, forget sending the financials. I said that I would need this in writing, so I will keep sending the fax until he sent that to me. He asked me to stop faxing and he would send it in writing, and I said, send it in writing first and then I'll stop. Long moment of silence, click. About 20 minutes later, I received an email from his assistant with an attached signed letter in PDF that I no longer needed to provide financials. The letter then threatened to pursue sanctions in court or sue me for interfering with their business. Every time I saw him after that, the lawyer never brought up sanctions, lawsuits, criminal referrals, or financials again. In the end, the divorce was finalized in the way most divorces end up. Neither of us got what we wanted. Hey, at least we're civil now. Story number two. Typical jerk neighbors complain about the truck in my yard. I live in a mostly quiet neighborhood with lots of snowbirds and weekenders because of the proximity to a lake. The year-rounders are mostly retired and people generally get along fine. A couple years ago, neighbors on one side built a new garage and driveway, moving their cars much closer to my existing Forsythia hedge. I love the Forsythia in the spring and basically let it grow however it likes so I can have the bright yellow flowers. Almost immediately, they started complaining that the hedge blocked their view as they backed out of their driveway. In my state, neighbors have no right to a view extending over someone else's property, and our Supreme Court has repeatedly ruled that as long as trees and bushes do not actually impinge onto the roadway, property owners have no obligation to trim for visibility. I keep a 5-foot strip mowed between my hedge and the road, perfectly reasonable to my way of thinking. Since they have no recourse re hedges, they instead complain to county code enforcement about anything else they can think of. My brother parked his licensed and insured project truck on my property a while back because he was in the process of moving and needed a spot for it while he was figuring things out. In the meantime, he was in a bad accident in another vehicle and the truck has been sitting for over a year now. The license plate recently expired and I got a letter from the county with threats of fines if it wasn't removed. Cue the malicious compliance. My brother decided to sell the truck for scrap and had it towed away this morning. This gave my neighbors their temporary victory as they observed from their deck and nearly six inches of improved view from their driveway. At least until I moved my second vehicle a 1960 Lincoln, which is about two feet longer than the truck with current plates and insurance, into that place this afternoon. As a single person with more than one vehicle, I may get around to driving that old car at least once more before winter. This is John from Slash Bash. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed the video and want to be the first to know when the next one drops, then subscribe and click on that notifications bell. We would love for you to drop a like, share it with your friends, and we will see you in the next one.